Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and in today's video, I'm going to be setting up my bullet journal for the month of August. I'm pretty excited for this theme today. I was feeling relatively uninspired, but I've gone for a rainbow theme because what better way to close out a bullet journal that has been a different color every month than with a huge rainbow theme. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. I am going to be cutting out these Dutch doors. I have decided to turn them into sort of tabs, wide stripped tabs. And for my cover page, it's going to be integrated with the Dutch doors. I'm just going to write August at the bottom to start off with and then I'm going to be using watercolour this month. I'm starting off by dripping some water onto my little watercolour paints. Now these are from a tube, so wet watercolours. I just haven't used them in a while so I have to reapply some water. Very satisfying by the way and they're such vibrant colours. They are from the brand Winsor Newton. I did get them from a little art class that I did a couple of months ago. I am going for a floral rainbow theme. Now <laughs> I probably shouldn't have gone with watercolor directly onto my journal because the watercolor doesn't really hold up on the Archer and Olive pages. Um, it kind of does but also kind of doesn't. When it's very wet it doesn't work very well but if it's very pigmented it works better so I will be kind of learning this process as I'm going but the idea here is that I started with pink flowers and I'm just going to keep adding flowers onto the page. Now these pink flowers nothing particularly innovative from them. They are similarly copied from my very first bullet journal theme of of the year where I did flowers as well but my flowers were very smooth and consistent whereas these ones are a little bit rougher on the edges just to have a little bit of difference. I'm also adding in some purple in the centers so that it kind of gives it a little bit more of a 3d dimension look although the blending just isn't working because again this paper is not for watercolour, so don't know what I was expecting there. Anyway, unfortunately for me, this theme was definitely not my favourite. I had the problem of, you know when you kind of don't like it, so you try and keep adding and adding and adding, and then you realise you've added too much, and then it's just overwhelming? Yeah. Well, that's what happened with this theme. But I am happy that I did it and that I continued because it was very therapeutic to paint this. I also didn't want to give up on it because I had already committed to the process by cutting out those Dutch doors. I had an idea in mind and it didn't necessarily work out. But I don't like giving up on things. And even if it's not beautiful or aesthetic in my eyes, maybe somebody else likes it. And also, the idea of a bullet journal is for it to be functional. If you're having decorations on it, that's fine. But the idea behind it is for the functionality part to be good and in this case the functionality part is good just the decoration not so much the red flowers very basic just using the brush again very rounded strokes and the next step by the way is to do these leaves now I'm doing two types of leaves first are the blue leaves and then I'm gonna go with the green leaves because I was changing colors up whilst I was doing this now these green leaves I do two brush strokes and then join them at the tips I'm only doing them towards the red ish smaller flowers just to kind of have some consistency across my page so all of the elements stay in one spot. The next leaves that I'm going to be doing are these ones. Now I love drawing these because what you're going to be doing is you use the pointed end for a very light touch at the top, you flatten the brush down to get a fatter middle and then you lift it back up to get that leaf effect. And for this one I'm going to use two different greens to bring it together and one is a lighter green and then a darker green and that's how the leaf looks. And you can see that I repeat this for all of the flowers. All of the pink flowers specifically because I feel like that's where they should be going. The next flowers that I'm going to be doing are these yellow flowers. Now originally I was like maybe I should make them little leaves and then I decided to go with flowers. The idea here is to use a yellow and dip the tip in orange so that it has a orange center and then a yellow outside. I did end up changing my process so I went in with the yellow and then added some orange and then I also decided to start with the orange and then go in with the yellow so that's what I'm showing you right here. So just a very light touch there and then when you drag the yellow through it it kind of brings that orange up a little bit to create create the little flower effect. And I thought this was very effective and I really like how it turned out. Although like when you put everything together, it kind of looks a little bit messy, but that's okay. It happens. Sometimes you're just not very satisfied with the theme. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because the idea, as I've said countless times, of bullet journaling is for it to be functional. The next flowers, it's just going over those initial pink ones and I'm brightening the pink and purple. So as you could see before, the pinks and the purples were very muted because I used more water than I 
I did with watercolor. So I'm just going over them again because I really do want to see the pink in these flowers. I'm just going to continue with all the pink flowers because I just want them to be more vibrant as I've mentioned. Once I had finished with the pink flowers I went in with some more of those blue leaves and I'm just going to kind of show you a sped up version of just like leaves being added to the page. They're always around the pink flowers because I felt that they would be best utilized there. The next flower is this one and this is my favorite flower. I wish I had thought of this one first and then stuck with that kind of flower for the entire thing. It's kind of like a rose effect and it just goes wider and wider around the page. So you start off with small paint strokes in the middle and you kind of lengthen each of the strokes as you go around. I try and keep about three strokes per layer of flower so that it kind of spreads out with three petals in each layer of the flower. And of course you don't have to make this smooth or perfect the idea is to make it a little bit rough and jagged so that it looks like a flower and I'm just going to continue this across and around this flower until it reaches the edges of the other ones I want it to kind of bring everything together so it's kind of like a how would you even call it like a, a mosaic of flowers so here you can see from a different angle how I'm painting on the flowers and I really love this blue flower I think it turned out so so nice because I was liking this particular flower so much I decided to go in with the same one just a different color and here I'm just going to use these ones to fill out the, all of the blank spaces on the page the idea that I had in my mind was to just make sure that there was absolutely no white space left on this page so that it was entirely flowers I liked the idea the concept is good Good. however the execution is not um, my favorite and sometimes we know the expression less is more which I obviously didn't apply here although as I said it was fun to do anyway and particularly these flowers I don't know it takes your mind off of anything and you're just painting away the next flower I decided to do were these purple ones first I did some dots in the center and then I'm going to drag out some of those dots to form the purple leaves I start by doing four leaves and then filling it out in towards the center just so that I have an idea of how wide the leaves need to be sorry the petals need to be so that the flower looks composed and rounded and not too funky on each side of course I don't always stick to that idea and some of the flower petals have more and others have less next because there is still a lot of white space on this page I decided to go in with yet again more leaves these leaves are going to go from the blue flowers and they are these longer stems with leaves compacted together I'm just gonna add them across the page very fast very easy to do this one is no pointed ends it's just kind of like a rounded leaf to finalize the entire page I'm going to add in some blue dots and some purple dots because there were still some white spaces but I just didn't know what to do with them and I decided well dots is probably the way to go. Next it's writing the header and I'm going with a brush pen from the Archer and Olive Calligraphs. This is from the subscription box the most recent one I think it was March then. I love these calligraph pens they're so so pretty because the August is a little bit isolated I just added in a quick little flower on the bottom of the page just to make it look look like August is really within the flowers and that is pretty much the cover page done. I know it took me a while to do this but I really enjoyed the process even though I wasn't the biggest fan of how it turned out. I thought I was better with colors. I thought I could choose better colors to go with each other. Apparently I'm not as good as I think I am so lesson learned. I think next time if I wanted to do the sim similar thing I probably wouldn't go with such bright colors that kind of clash with each other but anyway it was fun and I hope you've enjoyed this process but let's move on to setting up the spreads for the month of August because this month is pretty exciting even if the decorations are not my favorite. To start off with I'm going to do my monthly log and the monthly log is on the first Dutch door. The idea here is just to have my simple standard calendar. It is four by four squares for each of the little boxes in the calendar and I'm just going to use a fine liner to draw it out. This fine liner is a 005 tip which means it's one of the thinnest tips out there. I did not recommend this tip I just it was the only one I had on my hand at this point. It's very thin and wobbly and I'm not a big fan of it but it's okay I could definitely go over it again it's not a big deal. I'm also going to write out the numbers in my calendar. Now if you remember my last month's video you'll remember that I said that August and July were going to be very satisfying months because July finished on a Sunday and August starts on a Monday meaning it's a perfectly square table so it's very satisfying to look at. I'm also going to add on my little headers for the days of the week so the M to the the S for Monday through Sunday. W 
with a green Pentel brush sign pen. Then I go in with another Archer and Olive Calligraph, so this is just a different colour, and I'm going to write August on the top. By the way, this colour is the colour Blue Lagoon, and the colour I used for the first one was Jungle Green. And if you're curious about the Pentel brush sign pen that I use there, it's just the stock standard green one. I really love calligraphy, and if you haven't already seen my basics on calligraphy video, you can check it out by clicking on the link in the description or here in the card. I'm also going to write out goals down below because each month I like to set myself goals. Not that I've actually been setting myself goals recently, but I like writing it there in case I do want to set myself goals because the days that I haven't, I have decided that I wanted goals so and I never knew where to write them. The next page is my habits page. Now this one, I'm just going to write the header habits and I'm also going to write the column down. So the days of the week, I haven't decided what habits I'm going to be tracking in August because I'm going to be away for most of August or like half of August so I feel like my habits are going to be all over the place so I'm just kind of leaving it blank to see what I want to track and if I want to track anything at all. Next I'm going to do my memories page now because I know that I'm going away for most of August I definitely want to have a memories page. This is kind of a replacement of my gratitude log but it is very similar because the things that I will be grateful for each day are generally going to be the things that I want to keep in my memory and the idea here is to fill out each box every single day with one word or some drawing or something that reminds me of that day and why I thought it was special. I am going on a road trip with two friends so that's why this month is going to be a little bit different and why I think August is probably not going to have much information on it at all. Because I saw that I had filled the tops of my headers for the word memories I decided to go back with the jungle green to fill it out on the habit. By the way the, the colour for habits is parakeet and then the jungle green is the dark one and for the memories page it's actually the same pen and the colour is toucan orange. Now for memories I've decided to do these boxes as I said earlier. In my mind I didn't really count how many boxes I would need I just kind of started doing the boxes and then figured I would somehow count them at the end and so what I would do is I would just start placing boxes around my page and then hopefully when I got to the bottom I would have managed to do 31 boxes which I did manage to do although some of them got a little bit smaller and smaller as I went but that is totally normal and I'm very happy with how this turned out. I will post on Instagram what it looks like at the end. Next I'm going straight in with my review page. I'm skipping all of my weekly logs this month because I know that I probably won't use them very much and I'm actually just going to use a rolling weekly. The idea is that whenever I have something to do I will write it down but I'm not going to have set boxes to write things down. I'm also completely ditching my weekly spread layout from the last couple of months. Gotten a little bit bored of it and I kind of want something new and something fun. The colour green for this review header is again the Art and Olive Calligraph pens and it is the colour marsh green. By the way, if you don't already know, I do say this in pretty much every single video but I am an Art and Olive affiliate so I do have a discount code for you to use which is Vero10 for 10% off. Because I am an affiliate it means that if you do use my discount code or my link down below I do get a small commission for every purchase. So if you do use it, thank you very very much. For my review page I have kept this one as the same as always but the layout this time is very different. I'm going to kind of create the same boxes that I did for the memories page and kind of you know make it a little bit more fun just because I wanted it to be a little bit more vibrant because the flowers are kind of muted although no not, that's not true I don't know the pages feel a little bit blank at the moment. The idea is to kind of randomly position all of my boxes and hope that it fits my page. So the first one I'm tracking is my moods so if you have seen my 2022 bullet journal setup from the very beginning of the year I do track my moods and I have six different moods that I track throughout the year in my mood pixels table at the front of my journal here is a quick picture and each month I just track how many days I felt a certain emotion so that I know when I was feeling most happy most sad most anxious for example and I think it's just a nice thing to keep track of for the negatives box I've decided to fill out the entire box with the yellow color and then I'm going to write down the bottom the series movies and music. Now I anticipate that this month I'm going to be listening to some music because I don't usually listen to music. That's a fun fact about me. I am not a music person. I do not like listening to music very often. I much rather listen to an audiobook or a podcast or just nothing at all to be honest. I'm really not into music. It's kind of weird but because I'm going on a road trip I think we will be listening to music along the way. Next is my Instagram and my YouTube trackers and I just like to see how many followers or subscribers I have at the beginning of the month versus the end of the 
the month. At the top, I have my obsessing over. So each month I generally get obsessed with one thing. And then I have my biggest highlights of the month as well, which I'm assuming is going to be the road trip I have with my friends. And then on the side, I'm going to have brainstorming goals for the next month. Now I wasn't anticipating the box being this big for the brainstorming of goals. I had just spread out all of the other things down below. So I didn't have much, there wasn't anything else that I wanted to add. So I did make the brainstorm goals really big and maybe I will have more goals for September. For my weekly spreads, I have decided to at least put the header and I'm just going to use the marsh green. Now you can't really see very much, so I apologize for that. But the idea is just to have the header. I'm going to have a box on the side with the Monday to Friday because that's, those are the days of the week that I work. And I'm just going to write like the days. So it's Monday the 1st, Tuesday the 2nd, etc., all the way to Friday. And this is just where I'm going to put the hours, my shift hours in my journal because yeah, <laughs> that's when I'm working basically. I'm also going to start it off by putting the Monday on the next bit. And if you're interested in what this kind of spread will end up looking like, here is a picture from my Instagram because I have used this layout for a couple of different months before. And for example, I used it in March and it was a very nice layout and setup. So I really enjoyed using it. And I'm just going to use it again for August. For the Monday, I'm just going to do a little highlighted tab and with the same color use write the word Monday. I'm also going to put the numbers on the background just so that I know what day of the month we're in. And now we get to the flip through. So here is the cover page. It's very vibrant and very full on. It's a little bit overwhelming but that's okay. I had fun doing it and I hope you like how it turned out. Then we have our monthly log. We have my habits and memories pages. I love how these turned out by the way. Very very fun although maybe too much color Actually, no, I'm fine with that. We have three pages for weekly spreads in case I need to fill it out. Generally, I'm going to have some notes in there and my review page. And that's it. This has been my final spreads that I'm going to be using in my A4 journal. If you haven't already checked it out, I do have a video reviewing using an A4 bullet journal and I will be doing a flip through very soon. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've gotten to this part of the video, leave me a flower emoji down in the comments just to see who watches to the end. And if you're interested in more bullet journaling, you can watch my July bullet journal setup, which is linked right over here.